Hello and welcome to the 15th video in this series on Python natural language processing. In this video we're going to take a look at part of speech tagging. You'll see the acronym PLS in a lot of places. So what are we doing when we're tagging speech? And what is a part of speech? Well what it is is it lets us know what kind of word it is in that context. So for example we have verbs, nouns, adjectives, you might be familiar with those. For example, a noun is a person, place, or thing, or idea. Well, we can utilize NLTK, Natural Language Toolkit, to do a lot of this work for us. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can utilize it, and we'll get a little bit more into how we can start getting more familiar with it, and also I'll show you a nice help function that can let us um, get started with part of speech tagging because at first it is a little challenging. Um, there are some nuances when we tag speech because, for example, we might want to know if what kind of noun it is. You know, is it just a person or is it a place? Is it multiple things or one thing? And we'll see that coming up here shortly. So the first couple lines of code here we've seen a few times if you've seen previous episodes. Um, I use Wikipedia as text to go through. So I'm importing Wikipedia as wiki. I'm importing um, word tokenize from NLTK tokenize. And I'm just importing NLTK. Here I, I grabbed the article for Albert Einstein. Arguably one of the greatest physicists of all time. So that's what this is. It, it, and this returns a raw string of the summary of the Wikipedia article. Then we tokenize that. So we split that one massive string into individual words. And for ease, I grabbed a selection of the summary. So I grabbed the first 50 words. And that is in the variable al sample. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a new leap into part of speech tagging. So what I can do is I'll go al, I'll create a variable, variable al sample pos for part of speech. And then I'm going to go nltk dot pos tag And I'm going to pass that al sample. So let's see what that returns. All right, so now what are we getting? We've seen before where we'll get um, a list of words. So that's what we get in the tokenize. But now look, we have a tuple, which is a a fixed uh, a fixed object that we can't modify similar to a list but you can't update it so what we have here is is the part of speech tagging so we have NNP here for Albert Einstein we have CD for this number we have NN we have uh, DT. So at first, some of these are more intuitive. Uh, noun is is typically starts with an N, but you know what is the difference between NNP and NN and PRP dollar sign? This is really confusing at first, and I think one thing to get started with, and I have a little little function here, or NLTK has a function that can get us started. And I think this is a good place to begin when we're learning about uh, part of speech tagging. So what this help function does is it gives us more detail on the part of speech that, that we get, that it's returning. So let's just go ahead and see what it returns. So NNP is a noun, it's proper and it's singular. 
So that's a really somewhat subtle distinction between um, different cases of nouns. So you can have plural nouns and singular nouns. And what's really nice too is sometimes these definitions are a little unclear, especially if we don't have all that um, grammatical syntax knowledge going in. It gives us just some practical examples of names like Liverpool is here, Cougar, you know, and some, some other names and locations. So we can get a better feel for for what type of word it actually is. So let's look at another noun. Um, here we have science as an NN. Let's see what an NN is. So I'll go ahead and take that P out and we'll just look at NN. So this is a noun common singular or mass. So it looks like here you can have um, objects like thermostat and that's singular and we have like an animal type uh, wind which is like a an idea a concept humor which is another concept so there are some subtle differences and I think as we get more and more familiar with it these will become more and more obvious but I think this help function and I'll include that in the description so you can just copy and paste it is really useful um, when we're first learning so all right we've talked a little bit about nouns let's look at uh, what in is so here of is one and on is another so preposition or conjunction subordinating and then we get some other examples so with these two items here just the simple uh, use of NLTK dot POS under bar tag we get the actual results of the part of speech tagging and when we're learning we can utilize NLTK dot help um, and then this method you P E N N under bar tag set and we pass it the part of speech tag we can start to understand the subtle nuances between the, t the tagging that we're gonna do uh, for example P R P R P dollar sign uh, is not intuitive to me perhaps it is to you um, but we get there and you get pronoun possessive his, her, mine, our. So it's just a kind of general term for when we're speaking about someone and it's possessive as in um, showing ownership. Um, so his idea or her idea or they, their idea. Okay, so he, here we see that we can tag and then we can start with this uh, method with an NLTK help we can start to define what those tags actually mean. Why do we even care? Well, that's a great question to ask. Well, let's say we're trying to get the understand an article without knowing anything about it, um, or we want to get names from an article. Well, what can we search for in order to pull names out? Well, you could start with looking for NNP tags, which is a noun proper singular so how can we do something like that well we could go um, for I in range and we're gonna use al sample POS which is this information we want to look through all the in all the uh, items within that sample or we want to iterate through uh, to the from the beginning to the end that's what we're saying in the range and we want to look for in the list we want to look for the the one index of the tuple because the first it gets tricky when you're talking about indexes right we gotta remember it starts at zero so the first 
entry is the zero index and the second entry is the one index. That's, that's one way to think about it. So what am I looking for? So I have here, I'm looking at the I index. So that would select here. And then I want to go one more uh, distinction within that. And I want to look at the first index. And that will be a hard-coded value as opposed to the uh, iterative index because we only we want to look through each value at this one position. And let's say we want that to uh, we want it to equal an MP. Now what I'm missing right now is I need an if statement. So I need to go if al sample position or I'm sorry part of speech is equal to NNP why don't we go ahead and print that zero index and I need to spell print P-R-I-N-T And with any luck, this will work. So let's just check this one time. So we're iterating through all the values in sample part of speech. And if the tag, the part of speech tag, is equal to NNP, then we're going to print out the name. Or just the noun popular singular. And here we go. So we get Albert Einstein March we get a dash which uh, is something we can look at in a second in April so here this piece of code is pretty neat because all we told it the only thing that we did in order to derive the names from this article was specify the part of speech tag and the words that fit into that category were printed out now you see the dash is lumped in to the um, to this tag. And one thing we could do is, and we didn't do it here, is we could filter and remove some of those punctuation marks so we don't throw off our tagging. Um, we could remove stop words and take some other precautions to make a more accurate set where, where if we know that some value is going to throw off our, our part of speech tagging, we can always update and find those boundary cases. But this is a good first look at part of speech tagging. Um, we saw here that with simply specifying what tag you want to use, you can start picking out valuable pieces of information. If you wanted to find all the names listed in an article, singular names, you could use the NNP here. But we also saw that there are subtle distinctions between types of parts of speech, right? There's here is the, these are both singular nouns, but there's variations of those. So when we're first starting, starting to look at part of speech tagging, this NLK, TK, help, uh, and this method, this tag set method is really valuable because we don't have to memorize them at first, we can just utilize this when we're debugging and trying to get a better understanding of it. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you learn more about part of speech tagging. Uh, we're going to dive into more of part of speech tagging in the next video. But thanks again. I hope you have a great day. And stay tuned for more content.